you so much for joining us today. My name is Purvi Sanghi. I am a founding board member of the Legal Value Network. And uh, we strive to create a community within the legal ecosystem where everyone can grow, develop, connect, and network. We are going to be hosting our first in-person conference in September. So please check out our website for more information on that. I'm really excited today to be bringing to you a um, wonderful webinar that has been put together by our sponsor, Origami. Um, before we get started, I want to go through a few housekeeping notes. Um, so today's session is being recorded and we are using Zoom webinar. So attendees are going to be muted. Nobody can see you. So feel free to put your feet up, put on your bunny slippers, no problem. But just pay attention because we have a really exciting product briefing for you. Um, we encourage you to use both the chat and the Q&A function to reach out, make this interactive. I'm sure these guys will appreciate your questions um, and the more that they can share about their product they'd love. Um, use your Zoom controls throughout the session. Um, but you know, just go ahead and use all that. And we may use the poll function. If we do, um, the question will pop up on the screen. You'll have 60 seconds to answer. Um, apart from that, check out more about us on legalvalue-network.com. So um, now I'd like to go ahead and, and switch over to introducing our panelists. Um, first, we have Paul Gadridis and Maggie Miller. Um, Paul is founder and president of Origami, where he oversees sales, marketing, and corporate development. He's an artificial intelligence and machine learning solutions expert. That sounds really phenomenal. <laughs> and um, a technology entrepreneur who has co-founded several startup ventures. Maggie Miller is chief client officer of Origami, where she oversees product development and customer engagement. Her background is in management consulting, where she has led data analytics and client intelligence programs for some of the top 100 law and accounting firms globally. Um, that's a lot of brain power together. I'm really excited to see what you guys have to show us today. Um, in addition to your roles, um, you guys are also principals at Axiom Consulting Partners in the firm's professional service practice. Really excited to have you today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Purvi. Really, really appreciate the introductions. So let me share my screen here. Can we see okay? Yes. Great. Well, welcome everybody. Really appreciate all of your time today to join us and learn all about Origami. A uh, big thanks to the Legal Value Network and the LVN team for organizing this and hosting this and making it possible. So let's get started. So we can start with the basics. What is Origami and how does it help law firms? So in a nutshell, Origami is a platform that enables firm partners and firm leaders to do a better job growing and strengthening their client relationships. And we do this through artificial intelligence algorithms that we developed within Origami that runs on top of your firm enterprise data and produces insights and recommendations that allow firm leaders and stakeholders to do a better job managing their client relationships. And why is this important? So we found working for many years with, uh, with law firms and other professional services firms that the formula for success is unique and actually quite hard to determine for, for different groups of clients. Now, large firms have you know, thousands or tens of thousands of different client accounts per year. And many of them are very, very different um, and engage with very different services. So there's all kinds of different factors that actually affect whether or not client relationships are gonna be healthy, whether they will grow or, or whether they're gonna decline and actually end up leaving the firm. So there's all kinds of different factors, right? There's, there's matter delivery, there's the skills and experience of the individuals on the team that, that, that engage with clients. There's the market needs, uh, there's the client relationship, RFP pitches, billing invoicing trends, and the list goes on and on and on in terms of what determines uh, success within clients. So what Origami does is actually uses its AI system to cut through the noise to accurately tell you as firm stakeholders, which clients are best suited for growth and why, what legal services are clients most likely to need next so you can grow that relationship? And where are clients most at risk of churn and why? Really, the, we, we answer those three questions for firm leaders and partners and stakeholders. Now, why is this important for firms? Why does this actually matter? Well, predictive intelligence can unlock client growth opportunities in unique ways. And this actually creates significant revenue impact for firms. The dollar value is actually pretty significant. So we've done work with you know, mid-size and large law firms, uh, $1 billion firms. And so as an example, for a $1 billion law firm, 
if just 10% of the partners in the firm used Origami and applied it to just 50% of their client portfolio, their client accounts, and then based on that captured only 50% of the value that's identified by Origami's AI and predictive analytics, this would actually lead to a $40 million new organic growth opportunity per year. So there's a lot of reason to do this. There's a lot of reason to invest in this capability. Now, how does Origami work? How do we actually, how are we able to provide this? Well, as I mentioned, we use artificial intelligence technology and machine learning algorithms to analyze your firm's data. And then based on that analysis, we automatically generate insights and recommendations about your clients that can help you drive client growth. So there's a couple of steps to this. The first step is what we call the integrate enterprise data phase, right? So we actually extract and integrate and transform data elements from within your firm's systems within a dedicated and secure environment. So we do this all inside your four walls. None of your data elements or data assets ever have to leave your firm's networks. And then we integrate these data sources together to create a data model where we can run advanced analytics on top of them. We use your finance data, your people data, external data sources, um, CRM data where that's available and communications metadata, which captures interactions with clients and between firm stakeholders. Now then on top of that, we run what we call Origami's AI engine. This is kind of our secret sauce that we've been developing over many years that can produce interesting and useful insights about your clients. And so we run this analytics en engine on top of what we call a firm data model, which is a data, a data asset we create by integrating elements from all those sources I mentioned. And we can then provide these algorithms to reveal, number one, drivers of client growth and retention. What are the factors that actually lead to growth? Um, opportunities for expansion of services. So, so what are your clients most likely to need in the future? What, what should you introduce them to in terms of new, new, super, new service offerings? Um, and then the characteristics of effective delivery and effective client management. What are the, what are the you know, good behaviors or potential risk factors that might affect the longevity of a client account? And finally, we present actionable insights, right? Where we share client insights through a, a simple and elegant user interface dashboards that support clear and targeted action. We know that a lot of firms um, and stakeholders are overwhelmed with reporting technologies. Uh, they're overwhelmed with dashboards and, and too, much, uh, too much BI at times. So we make it very easy and simple, as Maggie will show you, uh, to use this information and take action inside your firm. And really the, the, core, the core things we provide, the core insights are growth opportunities, uh, potential, which clients basically are in need or have, have opportunity for growth, um, what their needs are in terms of services. So what, what projects and matters might you be able to introduce to them? Um, and also aspects of client management. So what can you do a better job in terms of communication, in terms of you know, managing matters, in terms of interacting with the client to do a better job uh, growing those relationships? So one of the things that we do is we, we actually can chart potential client journeys over time to identify the best paths for expansion across the firm, right? So if you can imagine um, an example of a client that's maybe just doing a, working with a single practice at just one time, this client might actually have a 40% chance of churning or leaving the firm in the next 12 months. But by introducing Origami's AI algorithms and insights, we can provide potential project recommendations for this client, and we can drive them towards being a, a highly profitable client, which uh, reduces their likelihood of churn to 30%. We can then provide um, additional project recommendations and, and introductions over time that make them a strategically aligned client, um, where now their churn is re reduced further, the churn likelihood is reduced further to 20%. And then finally, as we've managed this relationship more and more over time and proactively take action, they eventually become an institutionalized multi-service client with sticky relationships uh, with practice areas and partners across the firm. And at this point, the, the likelihood of losing that client becomes much, much less. Um, and, and the revenue growth is, is really incredible for firms. So we also have a concept that we call Origami's client health scores. And with these health scores, we measure attributes that can statistically predict the risk of churn and generate scores that capture aspects of, of client health. So you can kind of think of this as almost like a credit score that manages the, the, the measures the risk of client accounts and whether or not they're going to leave the firm in the future. And they adjust over time as new data becomes available um, to, to sort of let you know that there's risks happening within your client portfolio, but also to cue you into opportunities for growth. And we organize the, the, the components of the score into what we call drivers of client health. So these are factors or groups of factors that affect client outcomes. And we organize them into actionable areas that reveal how to better retain and strengthen and grow the client relationships. 
right? So there's clusters of hundreds of different me metrics that we measure over millions of data points about your clients, but we kind of organize them into areas that make it easy to take action um, around your delivery process, around cross collaboration opportunities with other partners, uh, the demographics of the client based on the kind of company they are, what do they need, um, aspects of your team roles and your team composition, skills and experience, and then also business administration, uh, you know, administrative management of the clients and also potentially external factors um, that might be driving demand or also risk within the client accounts. So now that you know how Origami works, I'm gonna hand it off to Maggie and we can actually demo the software. Awesome, thank you so much. Right. So what we're going to focus on today for this demonstration is how a user might use Origami to identify, once again, those three main things that Paul had highlighted. So one, if I only had the time to focus on one client, which client should I be focused on? Number two, what potential opportunities are there to expand the account to make my client stickier and help them grow in the future? And then number three, what could I be doing differently to increase my relationship strength right now with my existing work with this client? So that's what I'm gonna walk you through today. So what you're seeing right now on the screen is Origami's home screen. Um, so this is a dashboard that is customized to you as a user. The My Clients tab over here um, would represent clients where you own the client relationship. So whether you're a partner or perhaps a team leader that you're responsible for growing that client account, that's what My Clients will indicate for you. My Projects will represent clients in which you're managing parts of the relationship. So maybe you have uh, a couple matters with that client or you're managing parts of the delivery process for that client. Um, that's going to be your My Projects tab. We have the All Firm tab, which I'll focus on for today, and then also the ability to click in and search to be looking for different partners. So let's say you're in a coaching role as a leader, you might want to find specific partners to, to search for to look for their client accounts. Um, once again, each of these can also be customized to represent different hybrid leader roles or internally focused roles. So on the growth panel, you're seeing a few things here. So this really represents a snapshot of the top five clients at any point in time that have the most growth opportunity. So in this interview uh, overview panel, you see this, this Hawthorne Industries right here, right? And so you'll see this growth potential at 2.4 million. And again, what that growth potential means is what Origami predicts will happen in the next 12 months if you are able to capture all of that existing growth opportunity. So if you can really expand into those new areas of service with the client, that's how much growth opportunity uh, Origami is predicting. So we see that this is a very strong opportunity, 2.4 million with one of the projects being 1.5 million. So this might be a really good client for me to focus in on. So I'm gonna click into Hawthorne Industries, which will come to Origami's kind of hub page, right? So the, the hub page here is really used for every client to see, see what's going on. The left side of the screen here, you're going to see our overview panel. So this can be used at any point in time to be able to compare where we are today with where we need to go or where we could go with potential clients. So you see for Hawthorne, we're at 4 million in existing revenue with a growth potential of 2.4 million. Now this we can also scoot away and, and hide so that you can really focus in on other parts of the app as you go along the experience. So for Hawthorne Industries, once again, I'm really interested in that 2.4 million and how I can really capture that opportunity. But you're also gonna see over here, we have that health score that Paul was talking about. So a 416, that's um, you know, relatively showing a good score. That's kind of an average um, comparator score. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about how we get to that score in just a minute. But here on your kind of client hub page, you can look at four things that I'm gonna walk you through. First are these potential expansion opportunities. Second is what are my recommendations? What are the top things that I should go do? Third will be this client details tab, which is what's going on with the client relationship right now. 
And then lastly, the scores page. What's my health score? What's really contributing to either a good, healthy relationship or a more at-risk client relationship? So I'm going to walk you through each of these tabs and talk to you about some of the components and insights that you can get in each of these tabs. So we're on the potential projects tab and you'll see these top three potential projects. What this indicates is what Origami predicts are the most likely legal services that Hawthorne Industries here needs based on historical trends of clients who were similar to Hawthorne Industries have done in the past. So what does that mean? That means we're looking for clients like Hawthorne Industries who are in the same industry who are similar sized clients and also who have done similar work with us in the past. I'll talk to you a little bit more about what um, kind of historical trends have looked like for this client, but that's in a nutshell what we're talking about when we're saying similar clients. So you'll see we have three recommendations here. And the reason why we focus to three is because we know partners are busy. They have a lot of uh, conflicting time on their hands. And so we really wanna reduce the focus to what's going to be the most impactful areas here. So the three recommendations for expansion are commercial data protection, venture capital transactions, and licensing and distribution. So you see a couple points of data on each of these cards that are, are pretty interesting and, and parts of our model. So the first is this average revenue range. So this indicates the size of the opportunity based on what we've seen, once again, historically. So this is not necessarily meant to be a pricing recommendation, but rather it's meant to initially size the opportunity and help you as a partner or as a leader prioritize which projects and which matters might represent more of a valuable opportunity than others. The second component here is your expansion probability. So the expansion probability number really represents the number of times that the firm has expanded into this type of work versus another service area or at, at the worst case scenario, churning. Um, so if the expansion probability is high, that's a really good thing. That means the firm is really good at expanding into this type of work. It's gonna be something that your firm has been consistently good at. Um, if the expansion probability is low, like you see for this venture capital transactions opportunity, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the, the likelihood in this particular situation is poor. What it's really saying is it hasn't happened that often in your firm's history, so it might be harder to find proof points or examples than some of these more um, medium or higher likelihood events. Um, the third item of data that you see on these cards is service line. So this is really important for cross-selling, right? We know that that's a major uh, area of focus for lots of firms. And so this will really help you understand where can you expand into new practices or new service lines through these project recommendations. So we see two corporate opportunities here and an IP opportunity here, which, you know, based on where the existing work is, could be opportunities for expansion. The last thing that I'll draw your attention to on these cards are the experienced team members. Now, what we've experienced working with firms over many years is that especially in large firms, it's really difficult to figure out which partners or which people within the firm are experienced in different areas. Now, you know, you're most likely when you're working on a new opportunity to go to who you know, right? So a uh, partner who sits in the office with you, or you know, someone in legal project management who you've worked with before. What Origami really aims to do is help you get to the right people by using a combination of billing data and sales effectiveness data to look at who are the senior partners, um, senior level experts, and internal experts who could be the go-to for these particular opportunities. And the way that we do that is measuring by three dimensions. So first, who is experienced in the particular matter area? So this commercial data protection area, who would be the go-to for that type of work? The second would be who is experienced with the client. So who knows Hawthorne Industries? Who has relationships there? Um, how will that uh, impact the opportunity and the likelihood that this goes forward? 
And then lastly, who's going to be experienced in the industry? So you'll see that um, Hawthorne Industries is in the technology industry. Who has really good experience in the technology industry? Those are going to be the people that you want to go to. So our hope is, you know, what Origami does is really triage against those three factors to help you find the people who are best positioned to either help you originate the opportunity with the client, uh, win the work, or ultimately help deliver the work in some cases. So that's in a nutshell what the um, potential project, the top three, helps you do. And, and right away from here, you could go and, and use this information alone to go and surface new conversations with clients and hopefully get some, some traction, right? One area that I mentioned before as being really important to us for Origami is prioritization. People are busy and we want to focus you on what's most important. So you'll see that these are ranked right now by the average revenue range from highest to lowest. Let's say for example, that you were less interested of necessarily the size opportunity, but more on that likelihood, you can use this toggle to then sort by expansion probability. So now you'll see that the ordering is sorted from high to low probability. Just another way to view um, more likely opportunities versus more risky opportunities. You'll see here, clicking to view all potential projects will show me all of the opportunities that are in this client um, account. Now it's important to note, you know, for this client, we just have those three opportunities, but it could be different, right? Some clients will not have growth opportunity and that's okay, right? Some clients you're just going to max out and you know, not see a lot of significant growth opportunity and others might have pages and pages of opportunities. That's something that Origami will help you focus in on specifically by using that growth opportunity number to really see how much value is in each client relationship. Once again, prioritization. Don't focus on the clients that don't represent a lot of growth. Um, so what you're seeing here also, what I talked about earlier was, can you compare the potential projects that are being recommended from Origami to the existing work? So you'll see over here, we have an existing toggle. So you can go and see which work is currently being done by Hawthorne Industries so that you can kind of compare what you're doing now to what's being recommended by Origami. So you'll see that we have three, we've recently done three matters with them, um, a lot around kind of corporate work, company formation, cyber litigation is currently going on right now. So if I toggle back to this potential, I might be looking at this and say, hey, actually this commercial data protection might be a really good opportunity here. It makes sense given what we're doing right now. It's a high value opportunity. It's a medium probability, which means we're pretty well positioned for it. I think I'm gonna click into here, reach out to some of these people and start working that opportunity. One note that I'll make is we can um, build in integrations to CRM tool. Um, so that you can automatically push these opportunities into something like Salesforce to be able to bring that into your pipeline and your working um, habits. Okay, so now that I've shown you extensively how to get to um, those client opportunities and really be able to look at an individual client, I want to bring us over to um, going back to Hawthorne Industries and looking at those other two areas that we were looking at, right? So not only were we interested in one, how do we find which clients to look at, but two, how, what are the potential expansion opportunities? Number three was how healthy is my client account? So I, once again, I'm just focused on Hawthorne Industries for right now. I see that they've you know, been growing, so it looks fairly healthy when I just look at revenue alone. And then growth potential, you know, pretty strong growth potential, but what's going on under the hood? What's really going on in this client relationship to help me understand this health score? So I'm going to come over to our recommendations tab. So recommendations, we like to think of is if you could only do three things and focus on three things for a client, here are the three things that you should be focused on. So really reducing the burden on partners to have to do it all, right? So again, this client is in the good range. So there are, you know, they're doing quite well, but there's things that they could be doing better to improve the client relationship. 
So here, you're going to see two recommendations here of things that they could be doing differently. So first is increasing the adherence to budget. So this is something that, you know, what we've seen with clients like Hawthorne Industries specifically, is that if you can reduce the divergence between um, where you are in budget from 40% to 10%, meaning that there's less variation from budget, that would prevent churn by four times, right? So that's giving us an indication of Hawthorne Industries, really take a look at your legal project management and see if you can tighten that budget. Number two is increase the number of in-person meetings. So what we found when we compared Hawthorne Industries to other clients like them who have grown in the past, we've seen that in-person meetings is important to them, right? So right now we're having no in-person meetings and Origami is recommending that we increase to two and that would improve our, our um, likelihood of term, right? So an important thing here is Origami is providing these suggestions based on data, right? Based on things that we're seeing in the client relationship that we've compared to success stories in the past. These are suggestions, not hard and fast rules, right? So it could be that the client has said explicitly, no, we're not comfortable with in-person meetings yet given the state of the world. Um, that's not going to be applicable for us. Totally fine. That's just the recommendation that's being made for this month. Um, as you update Origami continuously, it will update in these recommendations as things change in terms of importance. So you might be asking, well, how does Origami actually get these recommendations? What, how do we get there? How do we get to these top three? So there are a combination of factors. First is what's going on with your client right now, which I'm going to preview with this, this client details tab. So Origami is analyzing your client management behaviors with the current work that you're doing, right? So you'll see that we're looking over this 12-month period of, of Hawthorne Industries and what is being done. And you see that, once again, these existing projects that have been done with the client. And so all along, while we're looking at these projects, we're looking at your client management behaviors. So we're looking at how often are you meeting in person. We're looking at what's your adherence to the budget. Um, and those things are associated with clients in the past who had really good outcomes when we had strong adherence to the budget, when we had good in-person um, dialogues. So that's really how Origami is, is thinking about this is, can we get you to look like other clients who have been successful in the past? Once again, it won't get it right for every single client. These are suggestions and areas to improve. Um, and we need partners and leaders to use their best judgment using this information. So another way that we get to the specific three clients that you saw, uh, sorry, three recommendations that you saw on this recommendations tab is the scores tab. So your client health scores tab will give you some of that underlying information of what Origami is measuring that's really important for these client accounts. So up top here, you can see kind of the trend of Hawthorne Industries. So right now they're at a 416. That's an improvement in recent months where we saw that right here, they were really at risk of churn in February, March, and April. And that's all being developed based on, once again, the, the themes that Paul had spoken to earlier of, of client management behaviors. What you'll see here is that we have this 205 in delivery process, and that's really bringing the score down overall. And once again, if you click in here, here's the trend, right? Adherence to budget and in-person meetings are contributing to a negative impact on this score by 36%. But let's say, once again, I can't really improve the in-person meetings. That's something that my client said is a no-go. That's where you can really use this tab to figure out what might work for you differently. So let's say I wanted to click into cross collaboration because I see that's a lower score and I'm trending downward here. You'll see that there's two other trends here that are really contributing to this score. Uh, collaborative selling has gone down and then internal firm function communications has also gone down. So that's a way for you as a partner to kind of figure out what you can do, what's in your control and what's out of your control. And over time, Origami has ways to work with you and work and, and receive feedback on what's possible, what's not possible, so that these recommendations get better and better over time, more fit for purpose for you 
more fit for purpose for your client. So now that I've shown you how to look at a client, look at their expansion opportunities, and look at ways that you can improve the health score, before we go to Q&A, I want to show you two other things before we wrap up. So first is that we really want Orgami to be a collaborative tool. We know that client relationships don't ever really sit in one part of the firm. They're meant to sit in through multiple relationships, right? And so we really want this to be a collaborative tool. So you'll see up here, the share button. This is a way that you can actually share Orgami recommendations, Orgami um, insights through different folks via email, as well as through the app itself, so that you can really start to have a conversation on how do you work with this client throughout different channels in the firm. The second thing that I wanted to call out is um, you don't have to just use that growth panel that we looked at in the beginning. Um, we were looking at Hawthorne clients for the purposes of this demo, but underneath here, we have much more robust charting and discovery functionalities within Origami that if you're a more data heavy person, more comfortable with that kind of functionality, we have that um, feature for you. So this is our full clients view. You can use some of the um, filtering and sorting to be able to look at different clients. So if I just click down this by growth potential, I can sort from highest to lowest. And then you'll see our filtering over here as well. So I could search by specific clients. I can search by specific client owners. Of course, I can look by industry, by practice area or service line, and then geography or office as well. So this demonstration was really meant to take one look at the um, client and kind of look at all of that client relationship. But there are definitely other exploratory functions within Origami that, you know, if you're really interested, we're happy to do more conversations as it makes sense. So I know we are um, almost 10 minutes or 12 minutes or so. I wanna leave open for Q&A. So please use that Q&A box um, so you can put your questions in, but I think we'll transition there now. Excellent. Bonita. Perfect, I'll start just um, ripping some of these off. Um, and we can get started on this. So um, we had a question here that says, does Origami take into account news developments in determining potential project areas that may have been relevant four years ago in a given industry sector may no longer be relevant today? Great question. So one of those things that um, Paul talked about, the areas that we're measuring is the external market trends. That's a really important indicator that we are, are very much um, interested in to be able to make those potential service expansion areas. So a lot of times what we're going to do is integrate in with external market vendors. Um, so that could include things like Orbis, it can include things like DNB, Hoover's, um, et cetera. If you have any um, subscriptions on hand at your firm, we can integrate those in as well. Um, so that's one way that we can use data from the external market to use in our algorithms for those expansion opportunities. The other way that I'll mention is this only really works well when we have strategic engagement with our customers, right? So our team, we do have a, a customer success team that works on actually identifying strategic goals for your firm and works with the algorithms to ensure that we're focusing on them, right? So we're not just trying to recommend stuff that you've already done that's really legacy type of work. Origami is configured to meant to work with your strategy. Great, so there's another question here. Does this type of predictive analysis rely on a firm having robust, accurate matter work type data? So one way to interpret that question is, you know, the taxonomy around how you tag individual tasks within a matter. And we know that firms often have very different ways of doing that. And sometimes those taxonomies are evolving. So the short answer to that is, you know, in terms of how each individual spends each segment of their time, that does not need to be that accurate for Origami to provide good predictive analysis. 
Um, in terms of the, the greater question of sort of classifying matters and the taxonomies around sort of what, what matters are and kind of what practice areas they're in and all that stuff. Um, as Maggie said, we customize the implementation to the specific taxonomy that your, your firm has. Um, so we do a lot of customization there to make sure that we're interpreting the categories of work uh, correctly. Um, and in some cases where there's messiness, we will clean that data for you in conjunction with you know, the domain, domain experts that run the reporting systems within a firm, as well as practice leads and other leaders. So we, we're confident, uh, particularly within the financial data, uh, that we're able to provide really good predictive analysis using your billing and finance systems. A similar question came in the chat. Um, it sounds like this needs a lot of data cleaning to make this work. I think this is similar to what you were just speaking to, Paul, on the um, data cleaning process. Um, I'm doubtful that we have consistent data across practice areas. Do you do this? Paul, do you want to talk a little bit more in depth of what that um, data assessment and data analysis process looks like before we process the algorithms? Yeah, absolutely. So, so first of all, the short answer is, um, you know, firms always are concerned with this, right? They, they always feel like their data is not good enough and are wondering whether or not inconsistencies are going to create problems with the analytics. So this, we hear this all the time. Um, so we, it, as part of the implementation process, we build this, we build like several months in um, to the process of analyzing your data, evaluating it, um, assessing the quality of the various sources and the various systems. And we don't actually need all of your systems to be in good quality to be able to make good predictions. We really need to focus more on like the financial and billing systems as the primary data asset. And then other data systems just kind of enhance uh, the algorithm's effectiveness. Um, and then we do a lot of data cleaning kind of in conjunction with your data systems owners, as well as, you know, domain experts within the firm that understand how work happens and understand sort of how information gets, gets collected. Um, so the short answer is, you know, we do, we, we're very hands-on with our data cleaning and collaboration. And throughout the life of, of Origami, uh, we have a dedicated data science team and value capture team that works with you in a customer success capacity to make sure that the insights are getting better and more accurate and data quality is getting better and more accurate over time. Awesome. We had a question on, um, can we hide uh, category suggestions from select or all if users, um, if a firm is not able to track or take action on a particular category? So I, I think this is in both terms of potential uh, service area recommendations and in terms of um, client management recommendations. Yes. So this is once again, something that we can do as part of both the configuration process, but it's also a functionality that we've built into the software as well. So we have the functionality to, essentially it's like a thumbs up, thumbs down option, right? So if you really like suggestions and you want more of those, um, we can put a thumbs up and that will help configure the, the model to make sure that those are prioritized. Um, but we can also thumbs down areas if, once again, I took that example of in-person meetings not being applicable. We can hide that suggestion and only have it come back up as it becomes relevant. Same thing that we can do with um, uh, projects, right? So let's say we just know that we can't do this sort of work or we can't do this kind of work because it conflicts with other work that we're doing. That's something that we can um, build into the, the interface as well. Yeah, and a couple other points on that one, Maggie, I, I would say also, you know, we customize the recommendation language and text that we provide for various suggested actions based upon, you know, feedback that we get from initial users and, and, and from firm leaders. So a lot of this is customized. It's not just done in a vacuum. We do it in, in collaboration with you as a customer. Uh, and the other point I'd make is, um, you know, we have control over all user access through your Active Directory or your authentication system. So we, you know, we can control which users have access to what kinds of information within the tool um, and then, you know, expand or contract over time as, as needed. One question, how are lawyers responding to this type of quantified scoring and growth potential or risk? Are they buying into it or are they skeptical? So this is a really important um, trend and, and something that's very important to us. So we like to see ourselves as an asset to partners, not a replacement for partners, right? We are trying to make their jobs easier through this tool, not harder and not meant to um, be combative, right? So to gain in, um, one thing that we think is really important at the onset is to gain buy-in from partners immediately, right? So we tend to work with partners at the very beginning of implementation, not only to get them to understand how the tool works, but as we were talking about 
have them participate in that configuration. So have them participate in which, which recommendations are going to be fit for purpose for the firm, which are not, right? And so we get a, a group of folks who kind of take a representative set of practices, industries, geographies, um, and really help understand how will this work within your world. And we typically find that when we create that initial buy-in and education with a small set of partners, we really get them to see this as their asset, as their tool book. Um, so we get them to adopt the, the tool and that typically will start to have a follow-on effect with other partners, right? So once we start with a small group, they have some success stories, they have you know, revenue that they're bringing in. We typically see that other partners want to follow. So it becomes kind of an organic approach to getting partners to use the tool. And remember, you know, you will have in some cases partners that don't want to buy in, right? And that's okay, right? Right now, not every partner needs to buy in. There's not everyone that's going to be loving an, an, a dashboard tool of how they manage their client accounts. Um, but we focus in on those partners who are, you know, most focused on revenue generation, who are interested in client expansion, who can think in these ways. And we tend to see that we can find a significant dollar revenue impact with those with those clients. Yeah, and to, to the point, you know, we addressed kind of early in the presentation, it, it, we don't need 100% adoption to, to drive a lot of value, right? Even just a handful of partners, a small percentage in the firm, relatively speaking, can actually drive quite a lot of, of, of revenue growth from using the tool. We have a great question here, which I'm really excited to answer. Um, so how do you factor in the influence of incumbent relationships clients have with competitor firms when to growth opportunities? I'm thinking it might be that your firm has core competencies that you could provide to the client, but quite often they already have someone who's delivering those services and it's not easy to unseat an incumbent or a panel firm's work. So I'll answer that in, in two ways. One is we always, always, always want to be gathering data, right? Um, I think the models are only gonna be as good as what we give it, right? So in some cases, you know, it's really hard to get a data set that says, here's all of the, the uh, clients and here's all the firms that they're working with on these types of matters. You know, if, if people had that, we'd be selling that and not, not this, right? Um, but one thing that we can do is take in that information on a case-by-case -case basis. So what I talked earlier about is, can we do that thumbs up, thumbs down? We also have kind of data collection mechanisms within Origami. So let's say for a client account, we were looking at Hawthorne Industries, they're working with ABC law firm. Me as a partner, I see, oh, I can't do that commercial um, data protection project because I know ABC is with them. I can enter in ABC is working with this client and then Origami will hide those recommendations and store that intelligence so that you can leverage it in other places, right? So this is actually a way that you can start to gather some of that information to make that um, accessible to other parts of the firm. Um, so that's one way. Um, another way is, of course, what we're going to be looking for is, um, you know, if there's a big gap, right? If we tend to see that for clients like this in this type of industry or this sized firm, we just don't have a lot of work in this area. That is also a strategic information tool, right? So that is something that we as your um, you know, advisors, right? As part of the customer success team can say, hey, we tend to find that we're not seeing a lot of success in these types of projects. Why is that? And that might be, hey, we're just not able to do a lot of work in this area because there are those incumbent relationships. But that becomes a strategic conversation and not just a tactical conversation of how do we expand into these areas. Great question. So I know we're at the top of our time, Pervy. There's um, one more question. <laughs> should we answer it or should we um, keep going or do we need to close out? If you all have time, we're happy to allow you to go ahead. It's, it's up to you. I don't want to impose on your time. All good. I think we, we'll do this one question. Feel free if you have to hop. This recording will um, be sent out. So um, I saw the revenue numbers. How do you come up with those? 
Um, so the revenue number, the 12 month historical revenue numbers is coming direct from your financial reporting, right? So the way that you actually recognize revenue is gonna be the exact same way that Origami recognizes revenue. Um, so we do that on a rolling 12 month basis. Now you saw the growth potential numbers. Those are those predictive insights, right? So that's looking forward the next 12 months based on what opportunities exist with those potential projects. So it's essentially looking forward and saying, hey, here are the project opportunities. Here's on average the value of those projects and then putting a probability weighting on that as well. One more question just came in in the, the nick of time and I'll answer it because I like it. Uh, for a firm that is just dipping its toes in, what works best to get started with? What's the best starting point? Paul, do you want to take that one? Um, sure. Well, um, I, I would say let's schedule time to chat a bit more if you're interested. Uh, we can talk, talk about sort of the onboarding implementation and POC process. So we actually have a proof of concept offering that we, that we encourage uh, firms to use that allows you to test out Origami's analytics, um, provide you some insightful reporting about your client portfolio, um, and allow you to get started with using kind of the insights of the tool without committing to you know a, a very very long long engagement so um, we're happy to discuss that more for, with anyone who's interested um, on what that looks like um, what's what's sort of required on our side and your side for that um, and having a, another conversation great well on behalf of paul and i Thank you all for joining. You know, we're really uh, passionate about this work. We're excited and um, we'd love to continue the conversation. So um, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. And thanks to LVN as well. Thank you, guys.